The gentleman from Indiana is recognized for three and a half minutes. Thank you. And I, I want to uh, thank Chairman Miller as, as a uh, former Republican staff director on the Children and Family Committee. Uh, when he was chairman of that and working with the committee, uh, I found, as he uh, said earlier, that he listened to the Hoekstra Amendment Committee and made some adjustments that, in fact, occasionally he is right. It's occasional, but occasionally he's right. This addressed some of our concerns. It did not address all of our concerns. That, as you know, when you're dealing with religious law or any law, it isn't at the heart of the matter, it's at the fringes. Uh, in, in communion, is, can minors take real alcohol and wine? Can Native Americans smoke pie? Uh, that uh, here, we're not dealing with, uh, uh, and this amendment helps clarify that, we're not dealing with religious colleges, we're not dealing with the church proper. But law in the United States, as we deal with religious discrimination, ability uh, to deal whether sexual uh, discrimination trumps religious discrimination, uh, which is fundamentally what this bill is about, um, that people who hel hold uh, deeply held religious beliefs, which is part of Orthodox Jewish teaching, fundamentalist Muslim teaching, and in the Bible, unlike civil rights, where civil rights were led by William Wilberforce in England, by the abolitionists of America, because the Bible was not explicit. But here, in fact, the Bible is explicit. The Koran is explicit. The Torah is explicit. And people have deep religious uh, held beliefs. So 85% of the Christian bookstores in America would not be covered by this protection. That uh, certain types of, of church camps would not be, depending on how it's handled. Group homes that are often independent and do not have an overt religious message that grew out of the faith message of, of, of uh, a, a church, but do not necessarily now have an overtly religious mission, they're part of the outgrowth of, of their religion, would be covered. They wouldn't be able to have a, a, a husband and wife be the house parents under this bill. That uh, religious law is a lot more complex than it was uh, presented today. One of the other challenges here is when we're trying to talk about how do we debate in public life over people of faith and, and which party they're going to be and how we're going to reach out to this, the American people have heard in this debate today people who seriously uh, are uncomfortable with this debate. We don't like to talk about this type of thing. I've tried to be, treat everybody in my life, regardless of how they've been in this Congress or friends at back home or people I've worked with, with respect and dignity and uh, do not practice personal discrimination. But I have heard my religion and my religious belief called prejudiced, bigoted, hate-filled, that the, the predominant religions in America have been, uh, had their basic beliefs, those who believe in a literal Bible, have seen their faith smeared today on this house floor. And I am very disappointed in much of the tone. I understand the passion. I understand why people uh, who have a homosexual lifestyle feel they've been discriminated against. But this is a classic question in our country. If, in fact, nobody could get a job, we'd be facing a different challenge today. I openly admit that. But the challenge here is do people who have deeply held religious convictions based in their fundamental texts of their faith have the right to practice their faith too or are they going to be trumped? This amendment is a step, but it's only a step. I yield back.